um, I am Chit Basu. I am the Assistant Professor of Empirical Democratic Theory at the Cologne Center for Comparative Politics, which is part of the University of Cologne and the Visa Faculty. So I'm also an associated member of the Cluster for Excellence eContribute Markets and Public Policy. And um, so in my work, I basically, you know, my research and teaching interests, uh, they're at the intersection of comparative politics, democratic theory and political behavior. And what I do is I use uh, tools like game theory and statistics to study um, electoral politics, party competition, party systems, um, as well as representation and public opinion. So I grew up in Singapore, an electoral authoritarian regime, you know, an illiberal democracy where you know elections are not free and fair. They're stacked by the ruling party against its opponents. And so when I moved to the UK for my university studies, um, I was struck by how elections work, how competitive elections work. And this made me much more interested in the question of how voters are able to use elections to, you know, control politicians, hold them accountable, and, you know, questions relating to the value of democracy, the value of elections in the first place. So uh, a lot of my work is uh, statistical, though I do also use some game theory. So there is less data involved in those projects. But when it's working with data, I spend a lot of time basically, you know, trying out different statistical models, looking at the data, thinking of new things or new angles to explore in the same data. So I did my doctorate in political science at the University of Rochester, which is in Rochester, New York, in the United States. And uh, this was right after I finished my university studies at the uh, uh, University of Oxford in the UK, where I did a degree in history and a graduate degree in political thought and intellectual history from the University of Cambridge. Um, so after I finished my doctorate, I joined the Institutions and Political Economy Research Group at the University of Barcelona, where I worked for a couple of years on an ERC-funded project um, on the birth of party democracy. Uh, so the institutionalization and um, origins of mass parties in Europe in the 19th and early 20th centuries. So uh, this is a project that I've been working on with former colleagues at the University of Barcelona, where we try and understand why socialist parties came to displace the kind of liberal and radical parties that were important in much of the industrialized world in the early 20th century. And the argument that we make in this project is that two factors were important. First of all, the industrial working class, which is the core constituency of many of these social democratic parties, had to have the right to vote. And secondly, what we think is really important is that trade unions uh, you know, supported the socialist parties rather than their liberal competitors. And you know, we um, argue that almost without exception, when these two conditions obtained, it was the case that socialist parties did well and liberal parties fell behind. And, um, you know, spent what we are now working on is basically delving deeper into a particular case, which is the case of the rise of the Labour Party in the UK, and understanding exactly how this process unfolded. So, and we're you doing this by looking more closely at the decisions of liberal parliamentarians, how they may have alienated uh, trade unions, why trade unions decide to back Labour candidates instead, and um, also understanding better exactly how union, how and why unions were important in mobilizing uh, individual voters to support labor rather than the Liberal Party. Yeah, so yeah, in a paper of mine which was recently published, so um, uh, the question I look at is why do parties talk about particular issues in their campaigns? And you know, how does this relate to what voters think and the issues they care about? And the argument I make is that something which is really important is how well parties have done historically in elections. So parties which have historically been smaller, which I call minor parties, these are parties which actually have the incentive to talk about issues where the policies that they propose might not actually be generally popular. Whereas major parties, parties which have historically been successful, these are parties which have the incentive to talk about issues where their policies are popular with the average voter. So this might actually seem a bit counterintuitive because an implication is that, you know, small parties that we think of as centrist, like the D66 in the Netherlands or 
and the Liberal Democrats in the UK, these actually have the incentive to campaign on issues where their policies are not that popular. Right? So for example, in the 2010 election, the Liberal Democrats campaigned on amnesty for illegal immigrants and um, you know, their opposition to nuclear power rather than their more popular positions on spending on public services or taxation. Right? And why do they do this? So the argument I make in the paper is that this is actually, for both types of parties, what gets them the most votes. Because a minor party, like the Liberal Democrats, if it is to campaign on what looks like a very similar policy proposal to a larger party like Labour, many voters might think, well, why would I vote for the Liberal Democrats? I like their policies, but the Labour Party has a history of government. It's much more likely to hold the prime ministership. I'll vote for them. Whereas by campaigning on an issue like amnesty for illegal immigrants, the Liberal Democrats can get voters who care about the issue, who like this policy, and who don't have an alternative party to vote for, which is also campaigning on a similar policy proposal. One of the things I like most about working here at the Visa faculty is uh, actually teaching, which is of course a big part of my job. And you know, one of the things I really appreciate when I walk into the classroom is just how much enthusiasm and intellectual curiosity my students have for the topics that we are studying, and also how diverse their backgrounds are because at WISO we have students who come from all over the world and so they're able to bring their diverse perspectives, their backgrounds and experiences into our classroom discussions and I think this makes for a really lively classroom atmosphere. So my goals here are, well, first and foremost to conduct rigorous research that advances our understanding of how elections work and their role and function in democracies and also as a teacher to you know train students to be analytical rigorous thinkers who are able to critically evaluate the information they receive and to be kind of informed citizens in you know democracies uh, that you know we live in